So hi everyone. So my name is Jahan. So today I'll be talking about uh, HTC Vive, maybe. So anyone of you guys know what HTC Vive is? Like everyone, so that I don't need to say what it is. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, just just a quick introduction of what it is, right? So hold on, yeah. Studio is just the best way we found. Alright, so this is HTC So you can see that controller over here, this this one. So it actually can do a really pretty good 3D position of your hand. So which means that you can actually use it to interact with all these kind of 3D objects. And then the behind the green screen thing is actually this outcome, this thing called mixed reality video. So essentially it's like overlaying all this kind of virtual object behind this thing so that you can do all this kind of stuff. Right, so that's a quick one. So, which when you got this, so I got this dev kit around two three months ago. So when I got that right, so it's like uh, everything is pretty raw. Like there's no not much like framework or anything. They just give you this X Y Z position of this controller, and that's all. Right, so you do something with it, which means that you need to recreate all this kind of GUI and stuff like that. Like how do you actually allow users to create all this kind of user experience? Let's say you want to let, let the user change the weapon and stuff like that. So how are you going to do about that? So that's one problem. And then another problem is moving around. So, so HTC Vive allow you to actually move around in a two meter by two meter space. And then you can actually track your uh, him on the display. So when you move around, you, it actually move around in that virtual spaces. But the thing is, if you want to move beyond that, that comes the problem. Okay, the easiest way you can do go about it is you actually got this trackpad thing. So it actually just like a normal trackpad, so you know where your thumb is, right? One way to go about it is like you know you move, you move your thumb like in front, then the whole thing will move together with you, right? That causes some problem like dizziness and stuff like that. Right, so that's maybe not a good way to go around it. So that's why if you look at the Valve uh, system, you can see that they actually use a lot of like, teleport teleportation system. So I'll show you what it is. So so there has been quite a few open source tools for this already. So this one of it is called Steam VR Un Unity Toolkit. Check it out and start them also. So uh, you can see the teleportation system somewhere over here. Hold on. So th this is uh, the basic teleportation. So, so basically just point a place and then it will teleport it over there. Right, then uh, there's so another system which is like... Oh, sorry, uh, hold on. Uh. Okay, so, so that's pretty simple. Just point over there, then you will teleport over there. There's, there's another system called Bezier Teleportation. Right, so which means that then it will do a curvature. Then after that, it will point over there, then it will teleport over there. Right, so... And then there's another thing called focal point system also, which is really interesting. So uh, this is another way to go around. Right, so, so you got both of your hand, right? And then after that, then you... This is me testing this out. Hold on. Right, use this uh, controller, then after that, then you point at the location and then you grab it. So this is how you move around, right? And then how you're going to like zoom up, just like you zooming the map, but you use both for your hand, like pointing at a certain location and then zoom, right? Yeah, just like Spider-Man. So uh, because I test this out in a few of uh, people that is not familiar with gaming and stuff like that, then to get them going, you know what I say, imagine you are a ground Spider-Man. <laughs> So you point the ground and you drag it around, then you can move around. If not, they don't get it, you know. Right. And then th this is like, you know, like, 
using your hand and move around like that, you know. <laughs> right, but you, you need to test it out. I mean, this is not not too dizzy. I mean, this is one of the good solutions if, uh, if it's like a CT view thing, so that you can zoom out, zoom in, and then maybe grab some stuff around, I guess. But more towards like viewing stuff, I guess. Right, so, and then... So, I'm just doing like summary of all of the UI UX that I've seen. Right, and then another one is the third person move around. I guess you have already seen it with the Oculus thing. So, the Lucky Tails. So it's like there's a, another you're like another person behind, and then you're following this character. So somehow when we are fixated to something, it doesn't seem to be like too dizzy for some reason, right? So this is one other way, and then another way that I think is really interesting that I stumbled upon recently. This one. Right, so this is, I forgot to watch this game already, but anyway, so so the idea is, do you see that character like moving there? Right, so this is me using this trackpad to controlling it. So you control the character already, then you zoom over, then you stop moving right, then you zoom over to that character. Right, so this this is another way to prevent like dizziness, because you don't want like graduating, moving and stuff like that, then the user will feel dizzy, right? Then, uh, I think this is the most interesting one. This is called read motion, right? This is, uh, so, let's... Right, this is my office, with green screen and all this sort of stuff. Right, so... Can you come over to the oh. left side? <laughs> uh, the idea is actually quite simple. So, it, so it actually detect your hand movement so that it will identify whether you are, move, you are moving, like jumping in the same location or not. I think this video doesn't show that. Hold on. Uh, right, I think this is a better one. He, he, okay, I think he put inside his pants. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that, that controller, you see? That, that's another controller like right in front of him. Right. And then you, by using this, it's actually detecting like... Yeah, I know. <laughs> we did not do this with this controller, so no worries. <laughs> but this works. Like, seriously, you don't feel any dizziness. I was like, really, really surprised. <laughs> I mean, the, the most, like, funniest solution is the, the solution for this problem. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right, so, so that's about moving. I, I, I think that summarizes uh, the, 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 the moving solution that I've seen around using HTC Vive. Right, for Oculus, of course, it's just like the Xbox controller moving around and stuff like that. Right, so interacting with our uh, object. So there's one framework that I've been using. I think it's really interesting. The idea behind that is really interesting also. It's called Newton VR. So it's a physics-based interaction of the wife. So when, when I got the HTC one, the first thing you want to do is interact with virtual objects. Right? So this actually allows us to like do some very simple uh, object manipulation using your HTC one. Then after that, then it actually like speed up the the, the delta time or whatever to to actually make it like you, you won't move fast something. So I think uh, this is part two. You can look at the part one. They tell uh, uh, the developer tell about like how how they design this whole system by using uh, the the faster delta and stuff like that. You can take a look at it, but uh, I'll show you this one, which is uh, more interesting. So there's actually two modes here. One is the ghost mode and one is the uh, physic mode. So the ghost mode can pass, can pass through everything, right? You see that ghost mode thing, right, which white color, right? And then we start to grab something and become a uh, physic mode. So when it's become physic mode, then you can interact with all those objects, right? So you can open doors with it and then you can do the slider thing and then the button thing also. So the, this seems to be like a, the GUI system of VR, I guess. Uh, maybe the dawn of it, uh, right? Uh, you got all this kind of sliders and stuff like that. Really useful, right? So, and then let's talk about menu, right? So you need to let user to control the, the virtual world, 
Right. One way you can use physics system and stuff like that, which like you know you touch all this kind of object, but still you need to give people a way to start the game and stuff like that. So there's a few ways to go around it. So one way to have a to to have a con uh, the menu on your controller. So this is called Space uh, Pirate Trainer. So they got a uh, on on menu controller. Right. Somewhere there. So uh, this, uh, because we we need a menu system for our uh, HTC Live pro uh, project, so that's why we did develop our own menu system. As you can see over here, it's like using this HTC Live uh, controller to actually point this thing. So this is one of the solution also, right? Then another solution is a you know shootable menu where I mean for the case it's those kind of uh, shooter game. So you just shoot the menu and then yeah, then you go to the next level and stuff like that. Or or somehow you, you are doing a fruit ninja game. So which means that you need to cut the fruits or stuff like that to start the menu. That's one of the way also. Right. So and then uh so with all those kind of things, I mean we can use the first uh, person view to represent our game, but the thing is sometimes it's like they cannot get what it is So it will be really awesome. You can do those kind of mixed reality video. That's why we got the green screen in our office So you can take a look over here yeah. Right, so by using a third controller or and then with the camera we can do something like this Right, so we should better represent like uh, what it is that they are playing than from the pers first person uh, view Right, so, oh, and then I want to talk about the, uh, our meetup in this Friday, right? So we'll be doing the Asia VR Dev Talks and Dev Jam. So, uh, which, uh, because we got the green screen set up and then with the HTC Vive over there, so it's like then we will start doing some hacking and stuff like that. So some some folks will be bringing their own CV one and stuff like that to to start hacking. So we we'll start with the dev talks. Then after that, then we'll do the dev jam for the Saturday Sunday, to you know use up the experience uh, to learn all the experience from them, and then after that start developing something I guess. Right. So that's all for me. Uh, this is my email. All right. Thank you. Oh, question. Yeah. <laughs> question, anyone? Right. Oh, which one that I yeah. mentioned? Right. Yeah. So that's a shooting one. That's a. Yeah. Which menu is the? I think, I think it's the the one that I showed just now the, with the menu system, and then use another one to point at it. That's the most natural one for some reason. I mean, in the community itself, in the HTC, uh, in Steam VR community itself, it's like they they say that the best way is to actually use this tracker. So you press this thing or this something pop up, and then you use this tracker to select the menu. But somehow, nobody. So I I don't know why it's not intuitive. I don't know why. I mean, I tested out to a few guys over there, but the thing is, they just don't. Yeah, somehow. So there's another way to go around it. Is actually combining these two systems. Somebody talked about it, but nobody implemented it yet. <laughs> but the idea is that you press this thing already, right? So there's a UI pop up. You can either use this thing to select, or you can use this trackpad. So it's like for for advanced user, right? Then you can, you know, by not looking at here and then draw something or shoot something and then select something over here, right? You can do something like this. I think it's more towards like for advanced user, lah. And then this is like for for new user that not used to it, I guess. This is more intuitive than using this trackpad. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Right. Anyone? Uh, yes. Right. I developed on uh, Razer Hydra with uh, DK2 before. Yeah. Right. So. 
DK2 and uh, so you are talking about a head-mounted head display, whether it's like resolution, all this kind of stuff, then yes. the software SDK, right? Yes. I mean, if, uh, the, the head controller is definitely about different uh, than yeah. the head controller. So I'm just curious, like, the headset itself, like, is it all different? You can drop by Friday and test it yourself. I'm not a good reviewer. I, I'm just like using the soft. I, I think the SDK is really good. <laughs> Sorry again? Sorry again? How do you get, how do you get Oh, this kid, how do I get this? Uh, because I sent an email to Wolf and then they say, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes? Can you give us a quick review of the controller? Is there anything you want to as a developer, what would you like to add to those controllers? Okay, so I would like to type using this controller. Yeah, that's a keyboard, uh, uh, Steam VR key uh, keyboard util. So you actually, uh, that's keyboard pop up in front of you, you use this the point, 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 or use this one, or use this one to, to actually type. But, uh, a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, so, so I would like to change something like this is maybe a squarish thing. And then because in this virtual, uh, in my head mounted display, right, I can maybe change, I can change the model of this one in the virtual one. So which means that maybe this one can be, if it's a square thing, right, then it becomes something like your iPhone or whatever, the touchpad, right? So it's maybe, uh, there's a possibility, maybe you, you do something like this, then you're like very intuitive to type, right? So that, that, that will open up a lot of possibilities. We, should, we are still really used to like typing and all this kind of thing, right? So it's like, this is actually faster than, you know, right? <laughs> 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 yeah. What are some real world applications for what you did for mixed reality? <laughs> right, real world. Applications. See it. Oh, I can see like virtual, so, so just now he asked like, so just now you asked like what kind of real world ex uh, use case for the mixed reality video, right? So HoloLens haven't, uh, haven't came out yet. So I think this is the nearest thing and then the easiest thing that we can develop to create the, those kind of mixed reality video. So as you can see the tech talk in the, the HoloLens tech talk, right? It's like, whoa, this is amazing, right? I mean, it's a very, very good tool for do presentation. Right. Imagine that you can do draw all these kind of buildings up, right, in this mixed reality video, and then I want to link all this kind of data to all this kind of building, smart nation, right? <laughs> right. Then you say want to link all this kind of data to every household, and then you do the thing that I do just now, like scale, and then like move the whole view of the city, like, and then go down to the, each household, and so we want to link all this kind of data into it. It's more convincing than just saying it, right? Real time VFX. Yeah, it's a yeah, basically a real time VFX. I mean, yeah, it's yeah, but you do it in real time. So that's one possibility. So I think maybe in the future this is the way we present. Maybe presentation is not two D anymore. It's three D. Yeah. Okay. So, any other questions? Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks.